by now. We are familiar with the conservation of mass, momentum and the energy equations generally referred to as the Navier-Stokes equations. These equations are highly coupled, non-linear, partial differential equations and have no general solution. There are only a very few problems that permit an exact analytical solution, most of which require simplifying assumptions. We will be looking at different approaches and assumptions that can be made to simplify and solve the governing equations. So, how do we tackle the Navier-Stokes equations? First, we need to understand the conditions of the fluid flows. Based on our understanding, we should be in a position to make assumptions about the flow that can simplify the governing equations. This process of identifying simplifications and transforming the equations to more manageable forms is generally referred to as modeling. Considering the flow to be incompressible or assuming that the fluid flow is invariant with time are a few examples of the types of assumptions that are generally made to reduce the complexity of the governing equations. It is the responsibility of the engineer to make sure that the modeling assumptions that are employed do not alter the fundamental physical behavior of the fluid flows. In practical situations, the fluid flow models are rigorously validated against experimental data and observations to ensure correctness. In addition to the assumptions based on the properties of the fluids, we can also simplify the governing equations based on the dimensionality of the problem. Though all the fluid flow problems are naturally three-dimensional, under certain conditions, it is possible to reduce the dimensionality of the flow. When dealing with flow problems that have a predominant direction of motion, with negligible variation of properties in any other directions, we can assume such flows to be one-dimensional in nature. Internal flow problems such as flow through a pipe can be assumed to be one-dimensional which dramatically reduces the complexity of the governing equations for such flows. On the other hand, if the fluid properties vary in two major directions and the gradients of these flow properties can be neglected in the third direction, we can assume the flow to be primarily a two-dimensional flow. Fluid flow around airfoils and fluid flow through rectangular channels are examples of two-dimensional flows. We will consider certain specific assumptions to rewrite the governing equations and try to identify analytical solutions.